United States, where with less than two weeks to the presidential election, Democratic candidates Kamala Harris and Republican candidates Donald Trump have been trading words as campaigns intensify. This comes as the race for the White House enters the home stretch. There is more in this report. The race for the U.S. election is tightening up, with major candidates still going at each other as campaigns wrap up. Vice President Kamala Harris spoke with the press on Wednesday, where she addressed comments made by former Trump White House Chief of Staff John Kelly about former President Donald Trump. Donald Trump said that because he does not want a military that is loyal to the United States Constitution. He wants a military that is loyal to him. That Donald Trump would invoke Adolf Hitler, the man who is responsible for the deaths of six million Jews and hundreds of thousands of Americans. All of this is further evidence for the American people of who Donald Trump really is. This is a window into who Donald Trump really is from the people who know him best, from the people who worked with him side by side in the Oval Office and in the Situation Room. Afterwards, Vice President Kamala Harris made a stop at famous 4th Street Delhi in Philadelphia upon arriving to the battleground state. There was an ongoing campaign volunteer appreciation event with officials in attendance. Speaking at his rally in Georgia, Donald Trump spoke on a variety of issues such as recent polls, the importance of people voting, and perceived shortcomings of the Biden-Harris administration. This is the worst president in the history of our country and the worst vice president in the history of our country. So, but now the fate of our nation is in your hands in Georgia. You have to stand up and you have to tell Kamala Harris that Kamala, you've done a horrible job. You're the worst ever. There's never been anybody like you. You can't put two sentences together. The world is laughing at us because of you and Crooked Joe. Kamala, you're fired. Get out. Get out. Get out. You're fired. Republican vice presidential nominee and senator James Vance added his voice in support of Donald Trump while speaking to supporters at a campaign in Nevada. Now, I, I have to be honest with you, I actually feel bad for my Democratic colleague, Tim Walz, the governor of Minnesota, <laughs> who has to run with Kamala Harris. No, no, think about it. Look, we're, we're charitable people. We can spare a prayer for Tim Walz because think about this. He has got to defend the indefensible. He's got to defend the record of Kamala Harris. It's the toughest job in American politics. I've got the easiest job. I get to defend the record of Donald J. Trump, and that's a record that all of us can be proud of. With less than two weeks to the U.S. presidential election, polls suggest that a tight race is expected, with the two candidates neck and neck nationwide and in battleground states. A global affairs analyst, Eji Kelpa, joins me on Ward now to discuss the U.S. presidential campaign with focus on the Democratic and Republican candidates. Thanks so much for joining us, uh, Mr. Opa. As we head into one of the most pivotal U.S. elections in modern history, the stakes couldn't be higher. With issues like economic inequality, foreign policy, climate change and immigration policy on the line, many see this election as a referendum on the direction of American uh, democracy itself. Can you share your perspective on what you believe are the most critical issues at play in this election? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, again, let me disclose I'm a Republican. I've already voted. Uh, and so so let, let your viewers know that uh, I may have my own uh, biases, but Absolutely. I want to be objective. As to your question, you know, what are the issues, for, you know, comforting Americans for the past, you know, almost four years that you know, Biden and Kamara Harris have held the helm of uh, uh, affairs. You know, it's here yeah, economy and immigration. And then, uh, uh, you know, our southern border is just an open border. It's like one of these come one, come all. And Kamara Harris was given the, the, the 
the job as the czar, and she didn't even go there. She she does she hasn't done anything there. So no country integrity is going to be protected if you have an open border. Nobody's saying don't come to America. You know, don't come to America illegally. Don't break into America. America is our home, and nobody will love their home to be broken in, into. So that that is a that's an issue. They, of course, the economy. Americans want to know there's going to be a job for them. The government doesn't create jobs. The government enables policies that you know uh, encourage employers to keep adding jobs. And, and and what do you get? You know, you look at the two candidates. You know, Kamara Harris just never owned anything. You know, you look at all the Democratic uh, candidates from Obama to Clinton to Biden to Kamara. What have they ever owned? There are people who just got into politics and you know they try to you know be rich and do whatever it is they've done on the taxpayers' money. But you know, Biden. I mean, uh, excuse me. Trump is the guy who has gone from an executive office of his company to the executive office of the president. He knows how to create jobs. He knows how to cut through, you know, the committees and all the things politicians do to say let's get to what really matters. And that's why, when you know, in his first term around, the American economy uh, was was the best, you know, in the past how many years of any president. You know, we had unemployment that is low. We had jobs for African Americans and uh, Brown Americans and everybody. And at the time, the Democrats said the only way you're going to get Trump to lose an election is to destroy the economy. And Democrats are fond of that. When they don't like you as a person, they're going to destroy anything that you're doing for the collective good. So, you know, this election is important. It's not going to be the most uh, pivotal election in the history of America. If you go back into the history of our because this election, it has always been contagious. Right, Mr. So what matters is now. Mr. Kwa, if you can hear me, uh, allow me to butt in. Well, just like you said, you've already put, uh, put out a caveat there that you are a Republican and then you might have your biases. But then, if you look at both candidates, you know, seeming to be playing their respective bases with heightened rhetoric, uh, Kamala Harris has doubled down on progressive social policies, while Donald Trump continues to push populist and nationalist themes. How do you think this polarization is playing out in Michigan, for instance, where voters have swung in different directions in recent elections? Well, again, you know, you know, the battle, the battleground states are the battleground states, and you know, polarization is going to be what, what it is because that's why we have two candidates. In fact, there are more, more than two candidates on the ballot. When you go to to vote, you're going to see there are two or three other candidates. So the, but the important thing that these are the two primary candidates. Kamala Harris, you know, we know she hasn't come up with any policy. She's trying to, you know, talk her way through things. What you know, the phrase not, the, the phrase that has become popular now called the word salad. Mm -hmm. She hasn't had any press conferences. She, I mean, on her own, she's not a very stable person. I mean, remember when she ran for nomination against Biden? She didn't even win one. She dropped out. Nobody gave her money. And then, you know, Biden picked her for whatever reasons that encouraged him to do it. And then she's like, you know, she's in there. And she is the lowest. I mean, she's gotten the lowest approval rating of any vice president in the most recent history. Mm -hmm. So now <clears throat> the Democrats are creating something out of her. And it, oh, this is very obvious. Americans are going to reject her. So whatever Trump is saying, you know, the antics of the candidates really doesn't bother me. They're going mm. to say what they're going to say. I'm just, I'm just, you know, con concerned about where is America in the world or yeah. where is America most importantly for Americans. Uh, absolutely. Because whatever anybody who is not a... Yeah, that's actually very Go important. Ahead. That's actually very important. But then let's look at this, you know, with billionaires like Bill Gates and Elon Musk taking sides by using their war chest to throw weight behind their candidates. You know, Mr. Gates privately donating close to $50 million to Kamala Harris and Elon Musk promising registered voters $1 million to support Trump and K. Starmer's Labour Party being accused uh, by the Trump Republican uh, you know, team you know, of supporting Democrats sparking intense legal and ethical debates. How do you see these power dynamics shaping the, outcome, uh, the outcomes of this election? You know, money doesn't win an election. Uh, you know, Hillary Clinton had raised the Trump the first time around. The Democrats are fond of doing that. It's the big, you know, people like uh, uh, Bill Gates that support them because the average Democrat 
doesn't you know fundraise for the candidates you know, so they get money through PAC and then they get money through big donors you know Hollywood people and stuff money doesn't if money were to be the factor or the most important factor Democrats would be winning every election because they often have people who on the right to their campaign. Mm. Uh, so I'm not, I mean, I know votes win elections, not money. I, I'm not told about, you know, billionaires. You know, the American system is such that everybody's equalized by a vote. One man, one woman gets a vote. A billionaire doesn't get a billion votes. You know, they can have, you know, the media outlet buy ads and say whatever they say. I have never for one been persuaded by how much money anybody has. Mm especially when it comes to my civic responsibility, which is to go vote. And I have voted ever since I became a citizen in 1995. So all those things, the billionaires, millionaires, you know, I really don't, if, you know, what I, you know, I don't care personally. I, I look at what is going to impact me as an American, and it's going to impact me where I live, which is Dallas, Texas. And, and, and that's what matters. So we will see. Uh, yes, Kamara Harris got a billion dollar, you know, contribution in the campaign, but is that what Americans are going to say? Hey, because she's got more money. No, Americans will go to the polls. They're going mm. to exercise their choice of who they want to see become president come January. Anyway, we we'll tend to see what happens. You know, it's just a matter of days whether that's you know donations or the support, the watchers, the monies are going to have a say in this election. Uh, time it remains to be seen, and then definitely time will tell. Global affairs analyst A.J. Kiopa. Thank you so much for your keenness of insight on this very crucial topic. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me.